So as I said before, we're going to be spending most of our time here in the West Wing. Uh, now make sure you have the perfume and the black robes when you come here. I mean, you can get them at any time, but it's just easier if you pick them up so you don't have to go back a... Whatever that is, it's not good. And there goes Anne again. Man, she and that courtyard just do not have any good run-ins, do they? Now, the nice thing about this is, in the SNES version, if you don't check out the window, and will actually be considered alive, you can hear her scream, but she'll be A-OK, -okay, provided you don't actually look at this. Unfortunately, in later versions, this was changed, so that even if you hear her scream and don't look out the window, yeah, she's still considered dead, which sucks because this is a random event. Unlike Laura's secondary death, which is very easy to avoid, and it's out of the way, so... As I've been saying, Anne is really easy to kill. Feel bad for the poor gal, but... Anyway, here on the left side of the West Wing, we have two rooms, top floor and bottom floor, which can actually be switched from game to game. This might sometimes be on the bottom floor, uh, but the thing about these two rooms is they're both completely pointless. I like to call these the unnecessarily creepy rooms. This one's the mannequin room. The other has, like, organs and stuff, and also there's a dead body in there. You can find in, like, a cupboard, or, or not a cupboard, but a closet. Uh, this one, though... Scissorman has a chance of being behind that mannequin. Thankfully, he wasn't this time, so I didn't have to get chased. Uh, now, on the bottom floor, there is the, uh dead guy. Now, he can actually come alive in later versions of the game, and you have to kill him with a dagger, which I believe is in the same room as that one. But yeah, it's completely pointless, so I'm not going to visit it in this run, because it would take me out of my way. Now, on this side of the mansion, there are a lot of randomized rooms that uh, randomize with each other. Uh, I believe there's one on the left side of this top floor, and on the bottom floor, the left and right rooms are randomized, but the middle one is set. On the right side of this West Wing, sorry, it's a big area, as I said before, uh, the top floor, both of the rooms are set, but both of the rooms on the bottom are randomized. Yeah, there's a lot of randomized stuff, and some of it's pointless, like that bathroom right there. And also, there's a door that's just there. I believe they replaced that with a bedroom in the uh, later versions, but that's also pointless, so, yeah. There are a few pointless rooms, but most of them, they are actually useful. Like this one. Okay, we got a ceremony key. Guess we're gonna... Huh? <sighs> yep. Figures my day would go this way. Vintage doll comes to life. Okay, uh... What do we, what do, we do here? Can we leave? No. Alright, uh... Plan B! Jennifer, attack! As they say... The best defense is running your skull into the thing trying to attack you. Now, we can leave this room, but there's this door in the back that actually leads to the room to the right of this in the hallway. It's a bit of a complex layout, but it's not too bad. I'm just bad at explaining things. Now, this room right here is a bit pointless unless something's happened. Namely, and being shoved out the window. Yeah, that happened in this run. And if she dies in this way, this will actually be left on the table. It won't appear unless that was the uh, particular death you witnessed, so... If Anne was your primary death, well, you're not gonna get this lantern. It's not... well, it's sort of important. We'll get to it later. Oh, and of course, yeah, here's the broken window. Yep, Anne was killed here. Also, some books. There are also books. See? Books. Alright, well, let's not dwell on Jennifer's dead stepsister. Let's just get out of here, because this room's got nothing else for us. Alright, moving on to the right. Oh yeah, and of course there are transitional hallways, like there were in the other section of the mansion, but... Yeah, just like those transitional hallways... These ones are also pretty pointless. But the one downstairs actually had that crack that led to the courtyard, so that one is actually kind of useful. This one, though, completely pointless. It's just a dead end. 
So, we're gonna head downstairs. There is some stuff to the right, but we'll get to that in a minute. Couple of randomized floors down here, so let's check out and see what we get down here this time. Oh, yeah, and we actually see the rubble from the, uh, hole upstairs. Unlike in the, uh, foyer, where that all that debris from the, uh, collapsed walkway just completely disappeared for some reason. I don't know why. It just did. So, what do we got behind door number one? Butcher room. Lovely. Okay, so, uh, remember that corpse I brought up a few minutes ago? That's kind of pointless. Well, in later versions of the game, it actually drops a particular item, which is actually located right here in the SNES version. Well, not not the cor crow corpse. doesn't drop a crow corpse. It drops the cage key. And, uh, see that cage over there? Yep. This key goes to that. So, yeah, they have an item just right next to where you need to use it in this version of the game. Why? I don't know. Maybe they were planning on using that zombie man, but then they ran out of development time or something. Or maybe zombie man just wasn't interesting or anything. I don't know. I'm not an expert on later versions of the game. I just know this one. Sort of well. Relatively well. But anyway, we freed that crow. That can actually be used as an evasion point. If you're being chased by Scissor Man, just enter the room, and that crow will chase him off. Not really the best evasion point, though, because I think it prevents you from getting one of the better endings. Could be wrong about that, because I never use the crow evasion point. And here we got the music room. Now, playing that piano is usually a pretty bad idea, for obvious reasons, I mean. If you play the piano when there's someone trying to find you and kill you, yeah, that's generally just a bad idea. But if we check this curtain... Hey, Jennifer. Aw, oh, didn't think you would fall for that. It was kind of a last-second hiding place, really. I mean, I was playing the piano and then I heard you coming. Uh, I just kind of panicked and went into that corner there, but... Uh, I guess we can play now, Jennifer. I'm gonna chase ya, as per usual. And you'll run, as you always do. Do we always have to do this, Jennifer? Oh uh, yeah, the camera's kind of annoying here. Jennifer's just right there in front of it. So, uh, evasion points, evasion points. Well, as I said, Crow Evasion Point does work very well, but it maybe might not be the best idea. I don't know. Unfortunately, we can't use this plank, and Jennifer won't jump this on her own. Uh, this is actually a specific event, which you actually have to enter from the door to our left uh, to activate that particular evasion point. We might see that later, though. So, there is actually one place we can go to. I don't, I'm don't. i pretty sure the uh, bathroom actually maybe sometimes works, though. The thing about the bathroom is, if it's like the bathroom from earlier on in the game, Scissor Man can actually break that door down, so it's not the best evasion point. But we do have this broken window over here. Hmm, possibly dangerous jumper, Scissor Man. I'm gonna take the jump. And we're good. Thankfully, he won't jump after us for some reason. That kind of seems like something Scissor Man would do. I could totally picture him just jumping down into the pool. He'd probably screw it up, though, so it'd still work as an evasion point. But let's not look at the walk back, because that'd be annoying. So let's just go right back to the West Wing and see what we have in some of the other rooms. Now, if I'm correct, this should be... The Library. Now, there are two very important items which are randomized at the start of the game. You either get one or the other, but you need them to finish the game on pretty much everything but the car endings. We do have the maternity magazines here, which is pretty interesting. wonder if Mr. Barrows has a wife. Ah, well. Anyway, let's just check these bookshelves out. We might find something of interest here. And indeed we do. I don't know what any of this actually means, but uh, 
It ends with the idol is on a statue, which is the important information. But there is actually one more item we can get in here, and it's in that crack in the wall. If you were able to pick up the lantern, you're able to get the item. Otherwise, Jennifer just can't do anything about it. Like, she'll always notice that there's something shiny, but without the lantern, she can't actually grab it. I don't know why. Reasons, that's why. But anyway, yes, we have that key, which could be useful later, so we'll keep it for now. But, of course, we need to go find that idol that the uh, little slip of paper was talking about. So there are a bunch of green statues here on this floor, but none of those are important. I believe the idol is always in the same place, at least it was when I played. So the idol is up these stairs, past this. So there's not really much of a puzzle here. Uh, if you look at the board on its own, Jennifer won't do anything. What you need to do is investigate that hole, then investigate the board, then Jennifer will do something about it. It's one of those weird situations where Jennifer just doesn't know what to do unless she looks at the thing first. Apparently my knowledge isn't good enough, Jennifer. But yes, the idol always seems to be right here. So this is the idol which we'll need later on, but as I said before, there is one more item. Never look for this item first. Because, uh, yeah, as you saw before, if it's not here, then Scissor Man will be here. Basically, you're just going to want to look at the library first, because if you can't get the idol, then that little slip of paper won't exist. Then you'll know to get this scepter that's behind this curtain in this quaint little vase right here. I really hate this scepter, because not only can it cause you to run into Scissor Man if it doesn't exist, but it's more complex than just getting the idol. We need to go to an entirely different room in order to actually use the scepter. For some reason, in this playthrough, I almost always needed the idol, whereas the first time I played Clock Tower, for all the endings, I needed to get the scepter, which was just annoying. Now, there is actually one more thing we need to do. Uh, there are two events that we'll need to get one of the better endings, otherwise, yeah, it's bad ending time. Uh, now, these events don't switch. Ye However, it is one or the other in this instance. If you get one event, then you can't get the other. So we're going to go back to the starting area of the game. Now, there was one room that we didn't actually go into. It was that room a little bit before the garage. So, since that room is unlocked, we might as well waltz in here. Alright, so here we have the kitchen. There are a few things we can do. Uh, now, there's a little cupboard between this fridge and the uh, freezer over there. Uh, that little cupboard has drinks in it. They can either restore your stamina or knock you out. Uh, knocking you out does a certain thing we'll be getting to soon. You can also get a ham from the fridge, which is a very important item. You'll definitely want that. And if we go over to the freezer over here... Oh no, bugs! Ah! But apparently Jennifer knew that there were bugs in there, so she just preemptively insecticided them. Well, that made things easy. I don't think the bugs can outright kill you, but you do need to kill them in order to get this gold key. Now, there are two more randomized rooms in this game. Uh, they're the uh, sort of background doors in that one hallway we were just in, or uh, room we were just in, rather, it wasn't a hallway. But yeah, those two rooms can be switched around. One might be on the top and one might be on the bottom in different playthroughs, but yeah. So the gold key leads to one of them, and actually whichever... Well, it's the same room every time that you have to go to first, the telephone room. The other room can be accessed by a key you can find in the telephone room, and uh, that other room is a bit more interesting. But we'll get to that in a bit after Jennifer climbs these stairs. Very, very slowly. I mean, nothing's after her at the moment, and I guess she is pretty tired, but eh, it's not like she's going to get any less tired unless she just falls to her knees and rests like that. Really, Jennifer, you should probably take a little bit more of a breather when you're walking. Stairs are a perfect time for that. Ah, 
And of course, like most keys, it's used automatically. Oh, look who it is! We finally found Miss Mary. Thank goodness. Hey, uh, basically everyone's dead, except I think maybe Anne, that maybe happened in an alternate dimension. Oh yeah, and I don't think I saw Lot die, so I guess it was only Laura that was killed. But there's also a murderer. That is pretty important, I'd say. Uh, Mary, Jennifer's a little underaged. She probably shouldn't have wine. Well, I guess we'll just have booze solve all our problems. Uh, oh, god damn it. I didn't think that would actually work. What do I do now? Right, so we wake up in here. If we got knocked out by the drinks in the cupboard back in the kitchen, we'd actually end up here too, except, you know, we wouldn't see Miss Mary uh, actually knock us out. Anyway, let's preemptive ham this man, because if we don't, he will actually eat us. Yeah, that that's a thing that happens. He's just that hungry that he's willing to cannibalize Jennifer. Just our luck. Oh, this is a... Uh, hey, adoptive dad, I killed your parrot, but that's probably the least of your concerns, right? And now he's being unnecessarily creepy. Right, so you're not really a very good adoptive dad, just throwing that out there. There's kind of a killer in the house. Killed a person. I mean, only one person sometimes. I mean, Anne was killed twice and then thrown out a window, but, uh, yeah. Anyway, if you kept that copper key, you could actually just unlock the cage like this. That's pretty handy. But what happens if we don't have that? Because we kind of don't. We only pick that up in one playthrough. Wow, rude. So, we got nothing to actually unlock the door in that puddle. Hey, it's Lot! Oh man, thank goodness you're alive. Everyone else is too incompetent to do anything. They, ju they just keep dying. Yeah, she'll probably kill the hell out of us if she finds we've escaped, so let's move. All right, to freedom! Oh, come on! Yeah, I'm gonna say no to that. You kinda just murdered my friend, so, um... Right, I'm a bit bored of this. And fuck off. Doing a very bad at punishing me, you know, right? Did you notice that when I hit you upside the head? Anyway, we don't have that little uh, crevice widened, so no shortcut for us. Thankfully, if we remove this box, then we can get back into the house. So we're going back to the telephone room. We can investigate this wine glass. Yeah, it was recently used. <laughs> Let's forget that ever happened. That probably wasn't one of our better moments. However, if we investigate this, we get the silver key to the other room that is currently downstairs in this playthrough. Now let's check out this armor. We're not going to check out the telephone because the wire's cut, even though it's always ringing. It's a ghost phone, don't question it. Oh no, it's... it's Laura. Ugh, yep, that's her secondary death. Why go to the trouble of hiding her in the armor? That just seems kind of pointless in all honesty. It's not like she could have hid Laura. It's not something that could have happened recently. You can't just stuff someone in a suit of armor at last second. She must have been dead long before Jennifer came in. But yeah, that's Laura's secondary death. As I said, it's really easy to avoid that death. Even if you're in the room, you don't have to look at the armor. Unlike Anne, who in later versions of the game, she screams, she's dead. 
it's kind of telling that I had to cut out the stairs sequence, even though it's only a couple of seconds. But it is really slow, Jennifer, seriously. Move like a couple of meters in basically 30 seconds. So here we have the study. Yeah, pretty interesting room, right? Weird old mural, crow god. Part of it's hidden behind the shelf. Well, we can't have that, can we? Fuck this shelf! Eat it! And we reveal that. It's a little vase with a... Uh... Whatever that is. Rock candy? She won't say anything about the part we uncovered, but if we look back at the main part of the mural... She gets an idea of something. What? I don't know. Now, there is actually one more thing we can do in this room. See those books over there? These books are important if Lot got shot, so, uh... We're going to have to investigate these for, for certain. So this is a bit of important information. We're going to have to remember that for later. And yeah, I just investigated that again for some reason. So, uh, as I said before, that thing with Mary... Yeah, that was one of the events that you need to do to get one of the better endings. There is, however, one more event. Now, see this little wall right here? Yeah, you probably noticed this. I mean, it's kind of hard to miss it, really. Wall was painted over, and not very well, either. But it looks like they're hiding a room. So maybe there's something over here that will help us get there. And indeed, there's a room over here. This is the second storage room, and I hate this storage room a whole lot. You wanna know why? Hey, Jennifer. I got this idea from a cat that was hiding in this box. I thought it would be fun, and it was. I got to hide in a box for a while. But I guess I gotta stop now to chase you. Oh, well. So yes, that's why I hate that storage room. Because it's one of the few rooms in the game in which Scissorman will just randomly appear, to my knowledge. I mean, apparently he can appear at random, but I've never seen it. That's the only room where I ever got screwed over. So, uh, let's, um, <clears throat> quote unquote, hide in here briefly and then double back, cough cough, gameplay mechanics. He can't spawn in that room, that's what I'm getting at. But, if we go this way, that scene I talked about earlier will, will occur. Okay, I got this, I got this, I got this! I totally got this, oh no! And he's gone. Yeah, by the way, if you do that scene without placing the plank down, it is possible to get down. Uh, there is a rope in the storage room here if you didn't get the rope early on, but you just have to tie the rope to the statue, and then you can get back. But yes, I really don't like this room. A cat can spawn in here instead of Scissorman, and that's always nice, but yeah, I don't really know how the RNG works for that, so basically, I just try to get this room done as quickly as possible in order to prevent that from happening. Basically... So this is another one of those instances where Jennifer won't actually do a thing until she knows it exists. We can't actually do anything about this wall until Jennifer feels it up, unfortunately. Kind of annoying, especially given this room. Hate this room so much. I'll just take this little whatever this is, steel bar, pipe, whatever. Whack the wall! And it just falls apart while Jennifer slowly walks away. Cool gals don't look at walls crumbling. It's not an explosion, but eh, we don't need explosions here. We just take down walls with sheer force of will. Okay, this is the completely blank room. Don't know why you'd even have a room like this. Yep. 
So Mary was the master of this house all along. I mean, we knew she was evil, but, uh... Yeah, she... This was all done on purpose. If we investigate this bag... Say hi to Jennifer's dad. Well then, unfortunately, he chose the wrong profession because he kind of got mixed up with, uh, freaky, freaky lady. Oh, looks like a memo. Oh, don't hold the skeleton, Jennifer. It might have diseases on it. Better hope that thing's sterile. To this day, I still love the way this man writes. This is the third day that I... Dr. Walter Simpson have been in here. I need to write in third person. I can't just sign my name. That's for plebs. So yes, in order to not get a bad ending, you also need to know that Mary is evil somehow. Now, this can be done by, you know, getting knocked out by her, or poisoned by her rather, but this is where we get the full story. So yeah, Mary and her brother, though the brother's never mentioned, practiced black magic when they were children, and due to something about the Barrows family, uh, which I'd prefer not to give away, uh, she actually ended up giving birth to two demon children. And unfortunately, Jennifer's dad was, well, the one to make the house call, and he kinda died for it. And I just love this. For some reason, he just writes Jennifer's name three times with ellipses every time. They told me to write how I speak, and this is exactly how I speak. Look, it's a first draft, okay? We can't all be perfect. And that's done and over with. So yes, now we know the story here. Mary gave birth to two demon children. I believe she married Simon, and he was part of the Barrows family, uh, even though she w ended up being the master of the house. But regardless, she gave birth to two demon children. And, yep, as you might have guessed, one of those demon children is Scissor Man. So, uh, yep, they're in it together. This is kind of one big plot. Mary worked at the orphanage in order to lure a bunch of girls back for... Well, we don't know why yet, I mean, kind of seems weird. I mean, she's evil, but it seems kind of weird to just bring four girls to a mansion just to kill them. You'd think there'd be some other purpose to that, but... Whatever, let's not dwell on that. But we've actually done everything we need to do to get to the end. So, uh, just a reminder, you'll need the black robes, perfume, if Lot died, you'll need to read the books in the religious study, uh, you'll also need either the demon idol, or the scepter. And if you grab the scepter, again, you'll need to go to the religious study and look at that mural. The idol, you can just go to the end game. Just nothing extra. Which is really nice. It's nice to not have to go through a whole bunch of extra bullshit just to, you know, do that. It's kind of annoying because you might run into Mary trying to go to the religious study because you have to get that key. There's a chance she won't spawn when you go into that room the first time. She'll never spawn once you've seen her once in there, but, uh, yeah, other than that, it is pretty annoying, because you might run into Mary, but regardless. Yeah, somehow she recognizes this room as the one in the mural, even though the only like thing is this vase over here. Investigate it once... And she'll just note that it's a vase. But once you do that, you just take this staff and shove it in the vase. Yeah, that's what that mural meant. Shove a staff into a vase. That's how you do a thing. But we're going to go with the idol, because I hate the idol so much less than I do the frickin' scepter. So let's just investigate everything over here. Crow's been offered in sacrifice, so 
Now we know why there's that butcher room with all the crows. Dead crows, live crows, a whole bunch of crows. They sacrifice the crows. We also hear the time will cause adherence line here, though. Apparently that doesn't mean as much as the clock tower's clocks have stopped. And lastly, we have this dish here. Should be obvious what we need to do with it. Just shove this idol in here. And that's all we need to do... ...to open up this hole in the floor. And with that, we're done. Let's just take one last rest. And once Jennifer's prepared, got nothing else to do, but to go on down to wherever this leads.